today we will discuss logistic regression and uh, how to do it with uh, SPSS. There is another video which discusses how to do logistic regression with eViews. There is a slight uh, difference in operating the two softwares. So today we will take up an example of uh, whether a person will default the bank loan or credit card payments. See, logistic regression See, there are many important research topics for which the dependent variable is limited. Limited in the sense the answers are answers of the respondents are yes or no. Will you vote particular this party? The answer will be yes or no. Will the person die or remain alive? Answer may be yes or no. Sometimes it may happen. The answer may be in probability. Yes, there is 30% chance that the person will be alive. Or there is 70% chance that the person will be alive. So there is a, now this probability is always between 0 and 1. So our dependent variable is either 0 or 1 or between 0 and 1. Now binary logistic regression is a type of regression analysis where the dependent variable is a dummy variable with the code 0 that I will not vote or code 1 yes I will vote or I vote it. Bankers also use it. The bankers note down the characteristics of certain people. They, they note down what is his age, how much the credit card bill he is uh, raising, how much the credit he is uh, taking. And uh, what is his uh, uh, debt income ratios? And uh, what is his income? How long he has served with a particular employee? So if they have got the record. And they, they default. They don't pay the EMI. They don't, they don't pay. So with the past record, can we say the present person who is taking the loan from the bank, will he default or not? If he is defaulting, so we give him one. If he does not default, we give him zero. So, and we can calculate either yes or no, or the probability of his default. Mostly when the probability is uh, more than 0.5, so we say it is yes, or if it is less than 0.5, we say no. So this way, uh, we calculate whether this there are how many are yes are there or how many no are there. So we can forecast it from the forecast value. We can calculate how many are yes or how many are used no if the probability is more than 0.5 or less than 0. So this is the way we do this logistic regression. Now, what is OLS? Now, in o, the OLS regression, we simply take y is equal to a plus bx plus error. Now, where y is equal to 0 and 1. Now, I just want to give you one example. Say, A is minus 0.3 and B is 1.5. Now, if x is equal to 1, so what will happen? 1.5 minus 0.3 is equal to 1.2. It is more than 1. 1.5 minus 0.3. The y is equal to more than 1. What do you mean by more than 1? That it is it is expecting the, uh, the probability is 
more than hundred uh, percent. Similarly, if x is zero, so then in that case, the y is equal to minus point three. Next one is the error terms are heteroscedastic. That the variances they do not remain constant throughout; they change. E is not error. Error is not normally distributed because y takes on only two values. The predicted probabilities can be greater than one or less than one, as I have given you the example. Say a is minus point three and x is one point five. So it will be if y x is one, it will be more than one. Y will be more than one. If x is zero, y will be less than my less than zero. So. that does not look nice that does not look good so that is why we don't use linear probability model now this linear probability model if i show it on graph the graph will become your x variable here the graph will become like that it will cross 1 or it will cross 0 so this probability probability will be crossing more than 1 or less than 0 in case of linear probability so there is a fat, fatal flaw uh, ols least square method logistic regression basically we talk in terms of probability so model is like that ln that is log ln is to the base e log is always taken as base 10 but we usually take ln so in uh, in uh, softwares it is easy for us to anti log anti log is exponential term so ln is is of p upon 1 minus p so what is p p means probability divided by 1 minus 1 minus p so this actually this is this is called odds how many odds we have got so p upon 1 minus p and if we take the log of that and then we regress it on x with alpha plus beta x plus error so then it will be a good thing <coughs> is the probability that events y occurs and p upon 1 minus p is the odds ratio so log of odd ratio we may call it log it we may call it log it so log p upon 1 minus p. now in that case if we compare the linear programming and log it model so as i have already explained this will cross these two lines 0 and 1 this lp model linear programming model will cross 0 and 1 this is though we don't want it but log it model log it model that will remain within the zero end that is the benefit of log it model because it will not cross the zero and one lines it will remain within the zero end so this is what we use in our uh, in our logistic regression we use maximum likelihood so mle involves finding the coefficients of alpha and beta that makes the log of likelihood function and uh, ll is less than 0 as large as possible so you can see this uh, video how we can calculate the maximum likelihood and how we can find out alpha and beta in my video regression this is quite interesting you just rd 5 minutes video it will just tell you how we can maximize the log likelihood uh, coefficients which is usually more intuitive is the odd ratio we use the odd ratio since p upon p upon 1 minus p is exponential term alpha plus beta x so if we uh, if we take the anti log of both sides that is exponential term of both sides so this log will go away so this side will be exponential alpha plus beta x so exponential beta is the effect of the independent variable on the odd ratio instead of taking directly beta if we take up the exponential term so then it will have the direct effect on the odd ratios now hypothesis testing usually we do it with the wall test wall test 
see t stat and wall test there is no much difference but only difference is wall is a skip t stat is beta upon standard error of beta t stat is what t stat of beta is beta upon standard error of beta but wall is it's a square of that which is distributed chi square with one degree of freedom okay so the partial r square which is which can be taken out from spss or also it can be taken out from e views also so r is walled minus 2 divided by minus 2 ll log likelihood alpha under root so this gives you the r now we can uh, correct the percentage correction see spss usually gives you what is the percent correct per uh, predictions it calculates it but in uh, in other softwares you can calculate yourself so this static assumes that if the estimated p is greater than or equal to 0.5 then the event is expected to occur and not occur so if it is more than 0.5 it is it will occur if it is less than 0.5 it will not by assigning these probability 0 and 1 and comparing these to the actual zeros and 1 the percentage correct yes answer percentage correct no answer and overall percentage correct scores are calculated okay, what is see how many actual yes are there and by your calculation how many yes are there so we just calculate percentage okay, that this one has been correctly identified or correctly predicted say my my yes in actual yes say my actual yes are 50 so but in uh, uh, forecast my my yes which are more than 0.5 probability they come out to be 30 30 so correctly predicted 30 upon 50 that is 60% we have correctly predicted so this is what this we use it how much our system correctly predicts it so this can be calculated easy let us see this file i have taken up this data from some other source the independent variables are age income debt income ratio and the default if the person has defaulted it means 1 if the person has not defaulted it is 0 so this default will become our dependent variable in the regression and these three variables will be our independent variables we will take up this file in spss import this file in spss file open data spss will ask me a few questions i will say okay and the file will be file will be loaded on the spss these are my this my rows on the data views variable views they are all numerical age income debt income ratio default now this uh, this all this is 16 decimals so you can just convert into just say two decimals better and this default is just one and uh, you can say zero and then a is also you can take it up up to uh, width 3 or 3 and income also you need to take you can take 4 and debt in ratio also you can take up to 4 so this will look nice otherwise there is no problem as such even if you are taking that way 
let us go to analyze regression binary logistic regression in binary logistic regression our dependent variable is default and your other other variables are age income and debt income ratio is you can take it as covariates okay now categorically if you want any anything else you or at this stage we don't need it save we don't want to save the results options any any you want to make any classification plots or you can want to make any goodness of fit case by sitting at this stage we will we don't need it we will simply say okay okay now there are no missing values now so here in the beginning block classification table shows there are 371 defaulted and did not zero zero default 371 128 is defaulted 128 is defaulted and uh, when we when we go down when we have entered into the data first thing is that chi square values this chi square value says this model is okay model coefficients are okay the significance 0.0 it is less than 0.05 the model is okay and uh, see the model summary table first it shows log likelihood minus 2 log likelihood which is 490.224 which is the maximum one as i have already explained you logistic regression is done through maximizing the likelihood then the second term is cox and snell r square which is 0.145 and nagel Kerke R square, which is 0.213. Cox and Snell R square and Nagel Kerke R square values, they are actually explained variations. How many, how much variations are explained by independent variables? these values are sometimes referred to as pseudo r square values now in this case explained variation in the dependent variable based on our model ranges from 14.5% to 21.3% depending on whether your reference is cox and snell r square or nagel kerke r square method it is better if we report nagel nagel kerke r square values now let us see the classification table now here i have valued zero as no and one as yes now in this case 351 persons who are there in the category of zero no but prediction says there are 20 who can default there are still 20 who can default from this as per our prediction so 94.56% predictions are correct 5.4% are not correct but in case of yes there are which are there which are not defaulted but say yes 92 says yes so it means only 28.1% 
परसेंटेज प्रडिक्शन आर करेक्ट ओवरऑल परसेंटेज इज सेवेंटी सेवन पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट बट प्लीज नोट कट वैल्यू इज पॉइंट फाइव जीरो पॉइंट फाइव ना इफ वी ऑफ अवर प्रॉबेबिलिटी इन कैलकुलेशन इज कमिंग मोर देन पॉइंट फाइव we will say the person will default if it is coming less than 0.5 we will say he will not default so our forecast 77.6% will be correct variables in the equation age is negative Minus point zero five one, and Wald is nine point five nine five, and this is statistically significant. Income is not statistically significant, though it is point zero zero five. That in income ratio is point one three three. That income ratio is point one three three coefficient is. and its vault is 60.309 it is statistically significant constant is minus 1.015 and its vault is 3.698 it is marginally it's a marginal case 0.055 we can ignore also we can we can do this regression without constant also we can see if our our So R squares they improve or not? Now let us copy this. I am going to copy this, copy and paste it in my Excel sheet. Paste it in the. I am going to paste in the Excel sheet. I have pasted it in the Excel sheet. Now I can use the forecast. using this this outputs i can forecast say the age of the person is say 50 years income is say 120 that income ratio is say 8 and constant is naturally is going to be 1 so will this person default will this person default what is the probability that this person will default let us see now this ln p upon 1 minus p this is the log of your odds log of your odds this is equal to sum product sum product of what some product of these these are the coefficients and then now actual values you want to predict with the actual values what are the actual values so now this one is your log log of what is actually this a plus 0.05 minus 0.051 into age plus 0.005 into income plus 0.133 into debt income debt uh, income ratio and minus 1.015 into constant okay now we are going to take anti log of this we are going to take anti log of exp of this number this will give me anti log and then then i will take it up the values of this this value is equal to b12 divided by b12 plus 1 see how we am how i am going to use this formula say probability is equal to this one probability is equal to 1 minus p this way i can take it as this i can take it as probability is 1 minus p into x 
is equal to this i can take it as x probability is 1 upon minus 1 minus p is x so p is equal to 1 minus p into raised to into x so p is equal to x minus x minus p so this p this also i will take it up the same p plus x p is equal to x so p into 1 plus x is equal to x so p is equal to x upon 1 plus x so that is why i am going to use this formula b12 upon b12 plus 1 b12 plus 1 okay so this gives me the probability probability is 0.12 so this means 12 percent there is a 12 percent probability that this person will this person will default we can take up another example let me correct it this is here equal to into 100 so that i may get into 100 oh it is already there v3 it's already there 12 percent so this is b13 that is coming into 12 percent let us say age of that person is 40 years and his income is only 80 and that income is 12 will that person default so there is a 25 percent chance that this person will default say age is 25 his income is say only 60 and that income ratio is 13 so will 43 percent chance though his age is less because age is coming as negative as age increases say now let us see this 50 years this this will reduce but if i age is 25 this will increase but if i if i uh, reduce the income say if i increase the income to 100 it increases so 120 it increases now if i debt inquiry ratio is say 17 so there is a 62 percent chance that this person will default so in this way you can calculate in uh, medicines whether this medicine will be effective or not whether this person will die if he is in the hospital whether this person will leave the department attrition rate you can calculate it you may submit your research work at journal of global economy rcssindia.org your work is evaluated by peers with double blind methodology you will get comments for your work Thank you.